with you in Vialichka. He was with you in Vialichka when the train stopped at Auschwitz. Um, in Flossenburg, when you were naked outside. And so this is the first time I got to meet, meet him. You're the only person who's alive, who knew, or who was with my father. So I just want to say- I'm sorry, I didn't know your father then. Maybe you did, maybe, maybe you were I did, with him. But no name, no Because place. he was also 14. He had the KL on his arm. And he I had, had the KL. KL. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, I'm so happy to meet you. And yes, I feel Same like here. your family. Same here. And I know will... who I'm talking to on Facebook. That's right. So I'm sorry to interrupt everybody, but it is really, uh, such a blessing. We are, you are, we are you basically are not, family. You are young. You are 91 and healthy. And so you have a long way to go. So From we will stay mouth. in touch. But I just had to say hello. I love you like family. And it's just wonderful to finally meet you. You are you. like my family. I am. You know wherefore I speak. I know from where you You know speak. the pain I had. I know the, the pain. pain I live with. But your words matter. And everyone is so grateful that you are speaking because it matters so much. You speak for your for the people who survived and the people who didn't. And your testimony matters because the truth matters to fight to keep you know the history from being denied. But I won't take up more time. But I will, I will be in touch with you. I will not let you go. Okay. All right. Keep thank you. I will. Take care, Anna. That was beautiful. Thank you, Jill. Funny, funny small world. Am I unmuted? Did you want? Uh, Jill is my other good friend who knows a lot of my history. Her father-in-law, mother-in-law were in Tarnov Ghetto. They, can, they could identify with my pain and my sorrow. So we are friends too, Jill. Although I never met you in person, we often there, chat on the phone. There's still time. Still time. There's Hope still so. plenty of time, Steve. Hope Steve so. is 91 years young, and I've been blessed to be his friend for the last few years we met because of our association with Tarnov. Uh, Magda, who's right below me, is also uh, from Tarnov. And uh, we're just so grateful to Steve because he is the voice of the residual survivors from Tarnov. I could see uh, Fred Arlo, who's on the phone, on the, who also has family members. Um, we are the community of second, third generation, generational activists who um, Steve has served as a role model and inspiration for. So thank you for sharing him with this group. Um, thank you. He's a, he's one of our precious uh, last uh, Tarnov survivors uh, who could tell the story and allow us to be, take that into the next generation. Um, I did want to mention that Steve had something happen to him a few years ago. I think that's really, really unique and something that many children of survivors wish uh, had happened to them. He was uh, contacted by somebody who found pictures of his family and he was taken yes. in yes. this uh, exhibit um, that he was part of. And he was able to not only see his siblings and his parents, but also the aunt and uncle. and um, we, uh, you know, it's a really unusual story. If he can just briefly share how that happened, that all these generations later, he was able to uh, be part of that beautiful uh, experience of being uh, contacted and shown the pictures. I think it would be really meaningful. Yes, good that you remind me of that. I spoke to her today. It was, she is a professor of anthropology in Vienna, not a Jewish lady. She's relatively young. She's probably in her late 40s, early 50s. When I met her, she was probably in the 30s. She worked at the uh, Holocaust Museum in Washington. And she had pictures of members of people in Tarnov who were interviewed by her type of people from her department, anthropological department, of Vienna universities, three or four Nazi ladies. We were interviewed to be shown one day that we were subhumans. We were measured, we were asked, we were talked to, we were checked out. The Germans had a way of mistreating us to no end. 
they did to us mentally as much as physically the worst that could be. They wrote, they wrote on my papers and my brother's paper, my sister's paper, that we are not subhuman, that we are active, we are athletic, we ski, we skate, we uh, ride bicycle, we rode. Under the Germans, we didn't. That we are very much like other kids. They couldn't take it. They could not take it. Probably in one way, why my parents were picked to be killed because they couldn't take, they couldn't tolerate the Jew being as, as, as another one, as the Paul or as the German. We were just as active, just as good as they were. We had just the same brain as they were, but they couldn't take it. They couldn't accept the fact that we were just the same. I have somehow or other, it comes in my mind that that interview brought my parents to us because it was a few months before the killing started. It was, must have been in March, April, and the killing started in June of uh, 1942. On the birthday of my brother, they killed my parents and my two sisters. Steve, if I could, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was gonna. I'm sorry. She brought the pictures to me, which I was, I, I will be eternally grateful for because I had nothing. You know, we went to the camp naked. We came out of the camp naked. And we had nothing. I had no pictures of anyone in the family. She was the one that brought the pictures of my parents and my siblings. Oh. And I have them now on the wall. Amazing. Chill, thanks By for the it. way, I tried to talk to the Jewish Museum of Heritage here that maybe they could make an exhibition of her book and the story that she had, how she found those pictures. Very, very important for people to see what the other side came up with. Thank you. Thank you, Jill, for that question and the comment and Steve for sharing. Um, so Greta had a, a question and then Russell and uh, Barto. So Greta, are you uh, able to unmute? Or... Sure. Um, I was wondering, like when you were a child going through all that you went through the Holocaust and then, you know, just in general, as you got older, how did you cope? Like, what did you do to cope with all of that? I, I, I mentioned that, that I was a drunkard. If not for the American doctor, I probably would have ended up a short life or died an alcoholic. I don't know. It's very hard. It's even hard today to cope with what I went through. The nights I can't sleep, my thoughts are racing through with what I went through and it's not a very pleasant feeling. How old are you? I'm 25. You're 25 because you look young. I know. And I wouldn't discuss with you the trauma that I experience in life because I don't want to traumatize another young person. Young person, I mean a, ch a child of 15 or 16. And, um, it's not my have, job. We have a lot of people who are here for the first time and a lot of people who have been here a number of times. Greta is one of them who comes and, and asks questions. So I really appreciate that. Um, can I say something to Steve, please? Can you hear me? Yes, Henry? yes. Henry? Yes, Henry. Henry Hello. from Borum. From Bournemouth, that's right. Steve, yeah. your talk was fantastic and it rings so much, brings home. Thank you, thank you, Henry. Because my, I my don't, mother, I am not, my I'm not a family. very good talker. Hang on, my mother's family all came from Tarnoff. That's where they all were born, apart from the two boys who were born in Germany after they left Tarnoff before the First and, World War. And, and, DP camps. and my, my father was also in Flossenburg, but he, he tried to escape. He, he was there for one week after having been marched from, from Auschwitz 
across, across Czechoslovakia. And after one week in Flossenburg in the stone quarries, he said to his friend, I'm going to die this week. I don't want to die in this camp. So he tried, I'm going to make a run for it. And on March the 2nd, 1945, he, he got a little bit of bread from his friend who gave him that, his, his little piece of bread to, to help strengthen bread. him. And then he ran to the forest, but a guard, and we think it was a Ukrainian guard, uh, saw him and he shot him. And he, that's where he died on the 2nd of uh, March from Flossenburg. But he was only in Flossenburg about a week or two because he was so weak from the, from the death march from Auschwitz. Um, and in, as far as Tarnoff is concerned, my grandfather, grandmother, and two of my aunts who didn't escape from Tarnoff, they were taken to Belzec. And that's where they died, apparently. They, 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 I think my, my sister and brother as well. Yeah. We, my we parents, know. as you heard, were executed, yeah. murdered. Right yeah. the, I only survived because we, my mother and father managed somehow, they managed in 1939, at, at, towards the end of Christmas time, to escape from Poland and to go to Belgium. And uh, they survived the war until they were caught in 1944, in April 1944, and taken to Auschwitz. I was sent to a, um, a Christian family. So a Christian family. Bless, bless on the head of the Christians. Yeah. Bless they, on the head of your parents. Yeah, they said they saved me. They saved my life. Um, yeah. So it rings a bell very much. They were, were, they, were they made the righteous? Uh, no, no, it was too late for me. And again, I haven't got witnesses either. And then, you know, it's one of those things. You should, I try, you should try. I People did, like I this did. should be recognized. I know, I did try. Remember, you you remember was... those people that are recognized are a yeah. symbol to us. Absolutely. A symbol absolutely. and protective of us. Yeah, absolutely. Try it's to, try to recognize them. It's interesting that your, your parents went from uh, Krakow to Tarnow. Yes. Because my mother, who was left with me uh, in, in Tarnow, she escaped to Krakow during the war in order to get the false papers. Apparently in Krakow, there were a lot of uh, people who, who issued false papers. And that's where she um, came to Belgium. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But I have a, a cousin who unfortunately died recently. He was from Krakow. Uh, Henry Vermut, have you heard? I don't know. If you ask me a name, I don't yeah. know any name. I could oh. tell you who the chief rabbi of Krakow was, but if <laughs> any other name. Yeah, he wrote a book, very interesting book, actually. He said, Breathe Deeply, My Son. It's his book. Uh, he, he was from Krakow. Anyway, it was wonderful meeting you. And maybe Same you'll, here. if Go I get a chance sleep, to tell my try story. Try to make those people made. that saved you. Yeah, yeah. Make uh, them important in your life. Not only in your life, I meant, but yeah. in the life of others. Yes. Others I around them. I will try. Oh, man. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry, uh, for sharing that. Uh, we'll, uh, Thank you, Henry. Go Have a good night. Go ahead. We'll go to uh, Russell and Magda, and um, just want to be mindful of everyone's time, especially yours, Steve. So let us know for infringing. <laughs> Steve, right, uh, thanks so much for sharing your story. Uh, tonight, um, I I was just wondering what your feelings were about the uptick of anti-Semitism that we're currently experiencing in the U.S. The uptick is that young people like you and younger should learn how to shoot <laughs> and fight back. We don't need guards to stand in synagogues that are policemen or security guards. We should protect our people and our property and our churches are synagogues with our own lives, not with theirs. We can do it ourselves. Oh. Remember, if we let them slap us, it'll lead to more. Thank you. I think that also speaks to the importance of having the Jewish state of Israel. Um, absolutely, so absolutely, absolutely. I'm Israel Chai. Uh, and uh, Magda, you had your hand raised. Yeah. Um, 
Magda is my friend. Magda is a very important part of Tarnov Jewish life. Yes, well, actually, uh, the, the only Jew in town, if you remember the Adam Sandler song, the Hanukkah song. Um, yeah, um, uh, yes, I, I am actually talking to you from Tarnov. I work for the Committee for Preservation of Jewish Heritage uh, in Tarnov with my father. And um, I mean, I, would, I have so many things to, to say and uh, I will not because we cannot keep you uh, up for so long and I have to go to sleep. Not you, you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I go, I'm going to work tomorrow. In the... uh, anyway, I, I just, um, I, I, one thing I would like to, uh, first, first of all, thank you and I'm, Really, I'm really happy, and it's a privilege to hear people like you to still be able. I, I I feel I'm blessed that I still know people personally, people like you, and it's it's like um, I mean I live in Poland, and uh, unfortunately, recent years brought up also a race of anti-Semitism in Poland too. It was there before you were born. It'll be there after you're born. Die. I know, I know. Unfortunately, it is true. Um, but that's, that, so that's even more important that people like you still should talk and we should, we should, we should record you. We should, we should have you because in a few years, somebody will come over to me and say, well, Holocaust, what are you talking about? Nothing like this happened. Who well, you, have denial, you have deniers everywhere and all the time. I know. But, Especially but when the, Jews are concerned. Yeah, but the moment the survivors will be gone, you know, it's like you, you, your stories have to stay. Your story has, to, your stories have to be. Have well, to be I, I try. I, I'm, not go, I'm not good at it because it affects me. It affects my health, both my mental and physical health. When you when you talk, things come into your mind or you cannot speak out because it's so painful. From my parents' execution to ghettos, to working with the Gestapo, to working with the SS, to pick up the dead bodies, to bring this mother and daughter of the Polish general of the district of Krakow was the only motorized person in the Polish army marching to fight the Germans. Uh, His wife, General Mont. General Mont, yes, General Mont. Mm -hmm. His wife and daughter, I took to be shot in the Jewish cemetery. Oh my God, we need to talk about it because we want to commemorate him and the. Uh, and 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 this 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 story. Um, but I want to tell you something. Uh, you, you were talking about the righteous, the very few among uh, the Gentiles that that saved the Jews. You, um, know, you said I, 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 apropos that, there are more Polish righteous than all of the rest of Europe. That's true, but on the other hand, the, we had the you know there were all the three million Jews living in Poland. But you know, but you, but you know, a, a gentile in Poland that hit a Jew was also killed. I know, and so his they family risked their lives. They did, and her in family. France, it didn't happen. They they weren't killed. That's true, and they didn't save either. Yeah, that's that's very true. So so th there were there are very few of them. But um, one of the projects that we are doing, and I actually talked to Jill today, to Jill and to, to Dan Oren and to Elizabeth Schanzer, we talked about all the different projects that we are planning to do with the committee. And one of them is the growth of the righteous. We want to commemorate all the righteous uh, that are connected to Tarnov, the Tarnov survivors. And well, you know, you I, was, I was my, just- my Marisha. So that's what I was saying. You said she was not recognized officially by, by the Yad Vashem. No. But for us, I think we should make an exception and we should put a, a stone she or a tree, whatever. It was. She was from a little town. I even visited the town. Would you like us to do it? Pardon? 
Would you like us to do it? Absolutely, if you can. Okay, so we're gonna talk about it. Jill, okay. I hope you um you agree. This we'll talk be... to Jill, I'll give her the name and uh, I'll talk to you for personally. Okay. Um okay. we're gonna okay. I, I I have a lot of we questions. have something else to talk about. We love dogs. Oh, exactly, exactly. So um, yes. I just wanted to say that you can see that Steve inspires his, you know, his story is hits deep in the soul for many of us, but he has given us the inspiration to bring this into not only the next generation, which we are, but the generations after. And um, it's really, you know, his words are really ha are impactful for us in ways that make us be activists um, and inspire us to take his story into future generations. So uh, Magda and I work with him on, you know, on some things that are going on at Tarna, but you can see that how how it takes people like survivors like him to give us that, you know, co-op, to give us that spirit and inspiration, the motivation to move ahead. Um, and we, you know, we have bunches of survivors that join this talk, um, Audrey Unger and Aileen Yolkut and um, uh, Fred Arlo, we're all part of this time, Tarnoff contingent who uh, feels strongly as second generations that we need to bring this and Steve, has been a real inspiration uh, to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Do we have uh, time for another question, Steve? For me, yeah, if you have, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, I think Alana has uh, her hand raised. Lana, are you able to unmute? If you want, you can type in your question. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Steve, someone asked um, if you have any children or grandchildren who will be able to carry uh, your your story and legacy. You speak to me? Yeah, yeah. That no, was I do not. I do not. And Alana, did you? Uh, were able to fix that. All right, let's see if there's anyone else who has any questions. Oh, someone uh, was able to unmute. No, Alana, do I hear you now? Hi, I did it, did it work now? It's Sorry, I'm on my phone and I just don't know how to use it that well. But um, you're I, in my league. Yeah, I, much just, younger. I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for sharing this. I can only imagine how it must feel. No, you can. Um, no, you can. No, no you're right. You can. You're right. I can't. Um, I really can't. And I. No human being outside of the few that survived. Yeah. We know the pain we went through, what we went through, and how mm -hmm. we went through. Nobody else can. I I just wanted to say also, um, my grandfather was in Flossenburg. He okay. died in two thousand and five. But um, yeah, I'm sorry. He he died in two thousand and five. Sorry. Um, but he was um incredible, and so much of your story it's like tonight you brought him back to life a little bit for me well, i'm glad so, that i did if that's so i wanted to thank you for that in okay. addition for for everything you did for all of us tonight um that was really special for me what do you what do you know about your grandfather where he came from where he, he was is polish he's polish um, yeah from brent was he in previous camps he was at Auschwitz and then he went to Flossenburg and then he was liberated well, from He was Flossenburg. not with us. Okay. Okay. Um I was not, I was in Auschwitz only on the train oh. station, not train okay. station, but there on the right. Waiting for, to unload us, so probably. It wouldn't be here today. Yes. I um yeah, it it, it means so much to me to be able to hear your story tonight, Steve. How old so was your, how old was your grandfather when he passed away? Uh 78. 
he was yeah so he was a few years older than you I think but there was a lot of overlap between he didn't I mean obviously he didn't share a ton about what he I was young right so do you know where he came do you know where he came from in Poland Bretzko does that does that is that did I say that right Bretzko Bretzko is like 30 kilometers from Tarnow Okay. Between Krakow and Tarnow. It's a small town, like a real shtetl. Okay. But has has someone very special uh, also uh, working there uh, with... Um, uh, Who's that, Anna? Anna? Anna Brzez yeah, Anna Brzezka. Yes, of She's course, a you fabulous know everyone. Woman, fabulous woman. Yes. A righteous Gentile. Yes, mm. one of those. A wonderful yes. person. So you should She's visit. She maybe gets you some information on your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. I will look into that. It's um, get in yeah. touch with get in touch with me or with. Uh, oh my God, Marta. Magda. Uh, Magda, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm famished. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to milk your time, Steve. If people have to get off that's okay but yeah. uh, we have more people with their uh hand raised so i'm going to call on audrey i believe there's another person i don't know the name but the hand raise it says ipad so you, you can go after if, if you'd like well let's have audrey first um hi steve um hi. I, I, my name is audrey unger reich and my father ron unger who jill has heard about and monta has heard about was born in Tarnoff in 1927. He's going to be 95 next week. And um, he... Muscle tough. May, yes. may he lived to be 120. Thank you. And he was in the Tarnoff ghetto, and he was among the last group deported and brought to Plashov. And so then he ended up... He was of the 150? They, he was working for Madrish. So I think there was about 2,000 of them that was brought, brought yeah. from the Madrish factory so to Madrish. They, so they must have left earlier than I. Uh-huh. I, I know it was- um, The last well, 150 were just cleanup crew. Right, so and he I was, was the, just before that in uh, and, September- and I was 40. the driver for the, a guy called Blache. He was wow. the, the commander of uh, the Gestapo, the SS in Tarnow. Uh-huh. Who well, I was- to the trial. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my thought they were deported. I I think in the last group before the D, before the cleanup crew, end of August, nineteen forty three, or beginning of September, and we're in Plashoff for a year, and then in Matthausen. and uh, then he was liberated from Ebenzie. But unfortunately, I was late, so I didn't hear your whole turn off part of the story. So I'll I'll listen to the recording. <laughs> it was very short and very ugly. Okay. Yeah, my father had, remembers it well, how horrible it was. More power to you. You, got, you guys are tough guys. No, we are not. We are not. <laughs> we are like the rest hum of, human, of humanity. Mm -hmm. We are as strong as we want to be and as weak as everybody else. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to wrap up this, uh, this Zoom meeting. If, if nobody else has their uh, hand raised or any, oh, it looks like um, Align, is that the name? Maybe, do you have your, um, I'd like to ask a question, sorry, so many questions. Uh, we're sisters, Aileen and Regine, um, and we're also, our parents were in Tarnov. Uh, they were in the ghetto and then sent to Plankov. And then through Oscar Schindler's list, they they managed to survive the rest of the war. They were on Schindler's So you mean they were, on the they were in Schindler's camp? Yeah. Well, when my, I have my two when cousins we, with Schindler. Who were your two cousins? One was by the name of Zev Shantz. Sounds familiar. My parents didn't get onto the list until I, I can't hear. I can't hear. She was saying that our parents were with Modric, worked for Modric, 
And when Modric, when they were liquidating Plasha, Modric, uh, he had a foreman named Titch, who liked my mother very much. And Titch said, would you like to be on this list for Schindler's, for Schindler? And, you know, you never volunteered for anything because you didn't know what it was going to mean. But my mother and father said, yes, we'll go. And that's how they survived the war. But I wanted to find out if I could, if, if you don't mind talking about it, a little bit more about your life after you got to the States and you, you said that you finished your education. You're clearly a very intelligent and educated man. Can you tell us more about how you I made a living? I'm not educated. I finished high school. I started school, I started college here at NYU, uh, night school, I couldn't hack it because I couldn't work and I couldn't study and I couldn't uh, go to college at night. I just couldn't, I did one semester and I quit. And what did you do for a living all these years? I and worked for my cousins who we were importing rhinestones from Europe, then we changed and imported sandpaper. And then we went into optics. And you married and had children? No, I did not. I did not, and I did not. No, no. Thank you. Well, you are an inspiration, and we thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Sharing it. And uh, Steve, one more thing you were mentioning uh, when uh, you were asked uh, for this job to dress the horse, uh, et cetera, you said that that's what your father was doing. And then yeah. you laughed. My father was a businessman. He didn't know from horses any more than you did. Yeah. But maybe you know more. Uh, I was a child when I was a child. I guess I was not the nicest or the best child in the world. So my nanny and I, my Marisha and I, were exported in the summers to a small town called Shanadolna, which today is a bigger city, I mean, a, a bigger town, with some wonderful people there. I never knew such people existed. Christian people that risked their lives to honor and respect the dead and the killed of Mushana Dorna and others. Unbelievable. The degree is, is unheard of. You know, the woman teaches theology in a high school. She's very Christian. She is a church going person. That she sacrifices her life and her family's lives to talk about the Jews of Mushanadorna. I went there and I used to write everything that, well, it was a, a small little town. It was like the far west in the 1800s. Sand and dirt streets, no sidewalks. Horses were the theme. If you didn't have a horse, you were very poor. If you have a horse, you had poor. But if you didn't have a horse, you were poor. I rode horses bareback because there were no saddles yet. Didn't know what to do with the saddle. And I learned how to be a horseman. It was my education at Shanadorna. So oh, you know why I raised my head. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us today. And everyone, thank you all for being here and for sharing your thoughts, asking questions. Uh -huh. uh, this was extremely meaningful. And um, with that, I just gonna close the group. Uh, wish you all a good night. And again, Steve, good thank night. you for good everything. Night. Good, night. Uh, good night, Magda. I'm sorry I misspelled your name. Say hello to your dad. And I uh, will, yes, he's okay. actually sleeping, but um, I, I, will, I will tell him sleeping. all yeah. about this. He's meeting. a little bit older than you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But um, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. You too. Say hello to Thank the doggies too. They are sleeping, but they will. I'll I'll hang. I'll, I'll give them a hug from you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, everybody. Thank Good you. night. Be well. Good night. Good night. Good night.